Richie Papatry and today I will be stamping within the planner pages of the Happy Planner just so you can see how the inks work with the Happy Planner pages. Now it looks like I have two planners here but really this is just my one planner from my last video and what I did was I did go ahead and split them up into two planners. This contains all of my 2016 inserts and this contains my 2015 inserts and it looks like it's a whole lot thicker even though it's only for half a year of 2015 but that's because I went ahead and created a whole bunch of inserts for like for example my grid papers just for taking notes or doodling and just a bunch of other worksheets that I created so that I can track my blogs and my vlogs and just map it out a bit and um, just to put together my little mission statement, my vision, my values, and map everything out strategically. So I will be sharing those inserts at a different time. I'm not sure if I will be sharing it within the YouTube video channel here or if I will be just sharing it on my blog. I will notify you guys in one format or the other. But as of right now, let's go ahead and look at the Mombi papers. Now this is the notes section and it's found at the very end of the 2016 uh, December insert here. So we're going to be playing around with this sheet today because I'm not going to be using this piece right here. And I have a bunch of other text weight here. I'm going to just be doing a quick comparison of the thickness and I know you can't feel it through just watching the video but I will give you my personal assessment of the feel of each text weight as compared to the Mombi insert here. Now this is a Georgia Pacific 20 pound text weight right here and you can see that it is a whole lot thinner. You can see right through that but this Mombi sheet is obviously much thicker than this little flimsy 20 pound Georgia Pacific text weight. Now this text weight is perfect for copiers or just everyday printing. And this is the Hammer Mill laser paper meant for laser jets and again this is a whole lot thinner than the Mombi insert so I can rule out that it's not 24 pound. And I have two 28 pound one is from Staples and one is from Georgia Pacific and just from working with these two papers even though they're both 28 pound I have noticed that the Staples is a little bit more dense so when I do my double side printing on it it doesn't shadow as much as the Georgia Pacific I mean the Georgia Pacific is really great it doesn't shadow much either but the Staples brand, I've noticed that it's a little bit thicker. So just by feeling these two, they're almost the same between the Mombi and the Staples laser for the thickness. However, the Mombi feels a tad thicker. So it could be a 28 pound with the Mombi, but it could be a little bit higher too. And this last one I have here is my 32 pound Nina text weight. And with this, this is pretty thick, actually. I love this paper. I love to use it for making elegant uh, envelopes or just if I want something that's a sturdier weight. And the Mombi seems to be pretty comparable, I would say. It's pretty comparable. I wonder if the Mombi is a 32 pound. And if not, I mean, there's a little bit more sturdiness with this 32 pound. I'm thinking that this is anywhere from 28 to 32 pounds so that is pretty good thickness for planner pages because if you write in it it's not gonna shadow over to the other side and that's the goal. So this is a pretty good thickness right here. Now on to stamping. I'm just going to be flipping this over to my notes section and I have about 13 different ink pads that I will be stamping with and I will be showing you the brand name of the ink pad along with what type of ink it is just so that you get a good idea of what shadows through, what bleeds through, and what works best. 
And most of the ink pads are going to be purple except for two, which are my Hero Arts and my Versafine. I don't have them in purple, unfortunately, so it'll be in pink and black for this. And as far as the stamps, I'm going to be using this Heidi Swap stamp right here, this Chevron Arrow, because it's a bold image, and I'm going to be using this chevron arrow up here because it's a fine line image just so you can see how every ink pad works with bold images versus fine line images i've already mounted them onto this acrylic block and i don't have ink on this right now it's just stained from my stays on ink so that's the reason why it looks purple but this is my Martha Stewart acrylic block and it's the perfect thickness because you can see my thumb fits right on the sides of the block so that I have full control on both my uh, thumb and my finger grips here. I'm going to be starting off with the Hero Arts Shadow Ink in Bubble Gum. And although it does not specify if it's a pigment ink or a dye ink. This, I have found, works more like a dye ink, so I'm gonna guess that it's a dye ink. The next one is the VersaFine Onyx Black. Ranger pigment ink this is also by Ranger however this is the distress ink and I'm just stamping with this one even though I know it's not gonna turn out as great as the other inks and it's not because it's a bad ink it's a really great ink it's just not meant for everyday ordinary stamping it has a whole lot more usage that um, you can totally play around with I just love this ink but it's not meant for your everyday image stamping I just want to show you so you can see how it looks like as you can see it's kind of blotchy right there and that's because this is meant to be a distressed look so it's not meant for your crisp images if that's what you're trying to get at One in pigment and the other in dye so I'm going to be stamping with the pigment first Fiskars ink pad and it's a purple color I don't think they name their colors Next one, I'm going to be stamping with the Memento die, and this is in Grape Jelly. Brilliance Dewdrop. This Versa Magic, and it's a chalk ink. And from what I remember, chalk inks are basically a hybrid between dye inks and pigment inks. It works slightly different. And the thing about dye inks is that it soaks into the paper. That's the way it's created to do. And the pigment ink sits on top of the paper. So it's not that one ink is better than the other it's just better depending on what you're using it for and what material you're using and what the purpose of your use is stamp abilities here and I have the dye ink and the pigment ink The last one is my stays on royal purple
just going off of the back here okay now you can see how it shows through on the sides here so right here up here at the top here let me zoom it in again so that you can see right here at the top you can see that it does bleed through a little and that is the hero arts shadow ink and remember i said that that was probably a dye ink for the way it functions and okay it's kind of unfortunate because you can't really see this little shadowing or bleed through of this pigment ink right here which is the versifying pigment ink and that's because this is printed in red but I do see very slightly um, the little bleed through right there and uh, a little bit of shadowing right here and it could just be that I saturated that because you can see that I did saturate the corners here a little bit when I stamped it down but I wouldn't say it's a bleed through it looks more like a shadowing and then again right here this is the ranger distress ink and that's a very uh, liquidy ink so I'm not surprised that it did bleed through and other shadowing is from these two right here and it's the Fiskars and the Memento dye I'm not, I'm not surprised about the Memento dye either because it is a dye ink and very slight shadowing right underneath that and that's the Brilliance pigment ink all right this one it has a red line again it's the Versa magic chalk ink I think I might have to stamp the Versafine and the and the Versa Magic down here where there's no red printed uh, header on the opposite side and let's see anything else right there that's the Stampabilities dye ink it does seep through a little bit to the other side and that's pretty much it the other ones you can see very slight shadowing like for example this pigment ink but I love how that looks so crisp right there and this dye ink is only $2.99 at Hobby Lobby so compared to other dye inks that are more expensive this is a pretty good alternative at first when I looked at the Stampabilities ink selection I was like okay they're so cheap they must be of a cheap quality but I found out that I really love the pigment ink I mean, look how brilliant that is. And um, it doesn't shadow through or anything. And so what I did was I actually went back to Hobby Lobby after I tried a few of their full-size stamp. And I went ahead and bought their uh, mini versions here. Just so that if I go to the park with my family, then if my boys are playing on the swing sets or throwing the ball around... I can just sit at the table and stamp my heart away so yeah I got these for a pretty good deal and sometimes they're all 40% off and sometimes they're all 50% off so it just depends on the sale that they have or you can always use a coupon and I'm going to go ahead and re-stamp the VersaFine and the and the Versa Magic down here Okay, so we have the Versafine and Versa Magic, and the results are in. There is a little shadowing. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom it back in. There's a little shadowing. It's hardly noticeable on camera, probably. But there's a little shadowing right there, and right there is where the Versafine pigment ink is, and the chalk is very faint also and so this is the result from all the various inks and of course the duplicates for the Versa Fine and Versa Magic and how it appears on the back I will be posting this on my blog just so you could get a visual of how the inks look like how they function with the bold stamp images versus the fine stamp images you can see that VersaFine is meant for fine stamping and it's an alternative to dye inks uh, which work great for 
fine images, but they're not so great when it comes to text weight because it does bleed through the paper. It does infuse right into the paper. And you could just go down and uh, look at how they all yield for the results. And I will be also posting the back side of the sheet in my blog and I will be indicating which inks were the ones that shadow through or bled through a little. So I hope this helps you on your mission to find the right ink pad to use in your happy planner. Remember to subscribe. I will be doing more planning videos and I do post on Instagram. So if you want visual inspirations, I will be posting either pages for my planners or just tips here and there or just cute things that I find at the store or if I find them online, I will be sharing it there too. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.